My name is Tarmac and this is my review of Owlboy on PC. So I like platformers, I always have, and that's what Owlboy is, sort of. It's a pixel art platformer with a rather unique amount of verticality to it, but also with a little bit of twin stick shooter put in for good measure. The game was put together by D-Pad Studio and the way that they describe it is as a high bit adventure where you pick up your friends and you bring them with you as you explore the open skies. I played the game with a DualShock 4 controller and of course on PC. It releases November 1st on Steam, GOG, Humble, and IndieBox for $24.99 US, with the possibility of other platforms in the future, though when and where is unconfirmed. I was provided review code by the developer to do this review, and, unlike Bethesda, they gave it to me about two weeks before launch. When I started the game up, I was a little confused as to what kind of game it wanted to be. There's a very simple jump and then double jump to start flying mechanic, which very early on opens up a good sized area to explore. You don't have stamina or anything along those lines, so flying feels free as you would expect. And very early into your flying, you're introduced to what seems initially to be a currency system, though it turns out to be more of an exploration meter with rewards. The game centers around Otis, a mute bipedal owl who is essentially worthless. He was supposed to be this amazing student, but is a klutz and fails at every turn. Honestly, the way poor Otis is treated by others in the game makes this an extremely adorable exploration of failure and familial disappointment. He's constantly put down by his teacher, but through a series of unfortunate events is still told he's responsible for completing some pretty important tasks, all of which he continues to be told he's failed at even when he starts to succeed. The story is cute. You live in an owl village on floating islands and your job is to look out for pirates, all while being pushed in various directions by encountering bullies and being sent after a mysterious troublemaker. And as the story progresses, those pirates do indeed show up, cannons and skulls blazing. The game does have a fair bit of dialogue, but it's done in kind of a click to skip kind of way. The initial portion of the game and a few bits throughout do seem to halt the flow a little bit with the dialogue, but the developers confirmed that this will be fixed before launch. I should also comment that some of the dialogue choices seemed, I don't know, almost juvenile. It's difficult to explain because the game has so much off the wall nonsense going on that I can't really justify why a character using the word bro bothers me, but it does. I felt that some of the stylistic choices of how certain characters spoke to be at odds with how the world was portrayed. So, how does it play? Well, for a game built on exploration, the areas are a reasonable size. You do have to consider that it is a platformer of some variety, so we're not dealing with open worlds, but it's also not small enclosed spaces for a good chunk of the game either. The areas have secrets to discover, most of which I'm sure that I didn't, because I'm not a completionist that way and I'm not very good at that. The controls are handled by either keyboard and mouse or controller, with rebindable options for keyboard, but not for controller. I wasn't terribly impressed with how the characters handle. Flying feels a little bit slow, although you do have a dash that you can use. I felt that they could have been a bit more responsive, even without stepping into a more complex animation territory, as it sometimes felt a little bit sluggish. Now, that's not because of any performance issues though. The game is locked at 60 frames per second and is most definitely not a performance hog. Where the game takes on a really unique sort of style is in how it morphs from a platformer into a flying exploration game and further into a twin stick shooter all at the touch of a button on the controller. Throughout the game you run into NPCs who will accompany you on your journey. They've got a distinct character all to their own and each has certain abilities. By himself, Otis can dash and spin, which can do some damage to certain obstacles, but it's not until you pick up his best buddy Getty and fly around with him, who happens to have a gun, that you can now pass by other obstacles that Otis couldn't have handled by himself, including dealing with hostile NPCs as well. So what I mean by switching at the touch of a button is quite simply that. You can run along the ground, jump into the air and start flying, pick up your little buddy and start shooting. It's different, and I like that. The graphical style is weird. There aren't any performance options to speak of other than V-Sync and full screen versus windowed, but that didn't seem to matter to me all that much. Owlboy uses a pixel art style, but done in a high fidelity sort of fashion. It's not too dissimilar to the more recent retro but not art style that we've seen in games like Fez or Shovel Knight. It's interesting to see a pixel art tree wave in the wind, for example, in a way that looks about as realistic as pixel art can probably get while still looking stylized. I have to say that I like the art style, 
not because it's overly intricate or high performance, but because there are certain types of games that do not benefit from 3D or more high fidelity experiences. I think that Owlboy would lose some of its charm, especially where the characters are concerned in how they display emotion, which of course is rather apt given that Otis is a mute. I think that the best way I could describe the graphics is how rose-colored glasses remember Super Nintendo games looking, rather than how they actually looked. From the perspective of audio, I enjoyed the music a lot when it was happening, but I found that there were more than a few instances of silence, which kind of lost me a bit. The songs were stylized just like the artwork, and more audio would have been good. I did have some buggy issues along the way and should add that I'm playing on a preview build. The dev has said that they've done a bunch of bug squashing as well as fixing the dialogue a bit, but as yet I don't have a final retail build to verify that with. The bugs that I tended to run into were actually very similar in a certain way. The game seems to miss certain cues which should cause actions to occur or stop. So for example, sound effects don't pause when you pause the game. This one's relatively minor. But the second one, which happened more than once at different sections of the game, was that I died during a cutscene because I had a hostile NPC following me from a screen or two back that I couldn't avoid when the game took control away to show the cutscene. Cutscene triggers should either not happen until enemy aggro is done, or should reset or despawn enemies to avoid this circumstance. So, what is Owlboy and is it worth playing? It's a unique, stylistic hybrid of a platformer that's heavy on verticality with a twin-stick shooter and a cute story that makes you want to play just a little bit more. The dialogue can get a little annoying at times, and the audio, while great when you have it, was absent often enough that I noticed I was missing the music. There are some bugs that still remain in what I played, but for the most part they weren't game-breaking or all that frequent. It's a good game, and I had a lot of fun playing it. This has been a review of Owlboy on PC. It releases November 1st, 2016 on Steam, GOG, Humble, and IndieBox for $24.99 USD and was pieced together by D-Pad Studio. It's a great little game, and I can certainly recommend that you give it a try. My name is Tarmac. Thank you very much for watching, and if you'd like to swing by Discord to chat with the channel community, a link is in the description. Cheers. Bye-bye.